Hi, I'm Michael Darby. I'm the founder of Cheetah. I'm actually an artist. When I founded this organization, it started with a hospital in India and then it kind of grew. And then uh, with uh, different people, I helped develop the center in uh, the clinic in Chiapas. And then we went into Nepal in the Himalayas. I've uh, initiated a lot of projects there, like schools, hospitals, and women's cooperatives. So all of a sudden I had a, an organization that was international and I had to come up with a name. It's funny that I also chose a Sanskrit word, which is Chitta, it's a C-I-T-T-A, and uh, it's actually, the meaning is part of the mind, it's a very descriptive part of the mind related to the heart. So it's the part of our mind which understands our connectedness to all things. Tonic, I was interested in basically because it has a lot of fresh ideas and a lot of very responsible ideas on how to deal with uh, manufacturing, sales, information, and kind of pulling that all together in, in the, what I think is, is the way to the future. Cheetah is also very innovative with the way we approach indigenous communities and how we work with them and get them opportunities. And I think this project is actually benefiting the women in Nepal that we have in a center that are producing the scarves. So they're benefiting from the production. And then the actual funds from the production, the sales, are actually going to fund a women's cooperative in Jaisalmer, India. So it's, it's a tremendous amount of win-win, a lot of great energy, innovative ideas, and I just think it's, um, it's exciting. What we came up with is a scarf that has um, different celebrities giving inspiring words, words that interest them. We kind of open the, the boundaries, not just to something that might be some positive reinforcement or something, but just something that's contemplative, a word that has meaning to them. So we knew we were going to come up with some interesting words, and, and we did. David Byrne was the first to come up with his word, and it was uh, dust. First of all, it kind of took me back, and I thought, interesting. But it really made me think, and then the more I thought about it, you think, what a small, minute thing that we discard or we don't think about. It covers everything. It's pervasive. Susan Sarandon's word was awake. Her description of it was even better. She said, it's, you know, first you have to be awake to do anything in your life, to have an intimate relationship, to be engaged in your life, to have dialogue with anything. You need to be awake. David Bowie came up with funk. It was interesting because his idea was it's an inner rhythm or soul, kind of the funk as in music, like a beat. So I was happy to figure that one out because there's several different meanings for funk. So <laughs> Scarlett Johansson's word was reuse. And it has a very poignant meaning now because people are very wasteful. They don't think enough about um, the consumption that we have and the effect we have on the third world or different parts of the world. When it was translated, it was very interesting because it came up as a respect for material. Candy Newton's word, which was surrender. When it went to be translated by the Sanskrit scholar again, it meant when you take on a new understanding that absorbs your entire being. Sting's word resolve was, I think, also very fitting for him to come up with because it's a sense of determination or purpose in life. Natalie Merchant's word was silent. So that was easy to translate into Sanskrit because it's a very profound, descriptive word. Latifah's word to me was really interesting because it was strength. And it just fit her and I just thought, what a perfect word for Latifah to come up with. Then we put it to the Sanskrit professor in Berkeley. One of her meanings was Shakti. And Shakti in, means strength from a female perspective, like it's a female energy. And I just thought the whole amalgamation of the, the, those choices kind of, it was perfect. To me, all of these artists are um, they're people to me who are very uh, grounded, very successful, and have a very powerful and passionate way of, of, of putting words into the world. And I think it's the way of the future for luxury items. I mean, if you can buy a luxury item that you really adore, and you're actually thinking this thing is benefiting women in need in, in some of the poorest regions of the world, it's a no-brainer for a Christmas gift. <laughs>